Hey, good morning, Facebook. It's Josh Pies and Pat Taylor, and he, we are here live on, uh, boy, we're streaming to a lot of channels right now. And uh, you know what? We're going to talk real estate this morning. So uh, we are live on Triple T's page. Uh, that is Pat and Ben, Taylor and Tyler. Um, and uh, I'm Josh Pies. We're streaming to a lot of my pages, C47 Films, joshpies.com, and my personal page. So uh, welcome, Pat. Good morning. Good morning, Josh. How are you in this 342nd day of quarantine? Yeah, is it really that few days? Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I think we're actually on day 33 of, of being locked in the house with the kids, and um, they're all still alive, so it's a point of pride for all of us. Um, and then uh, I guess the most interesting thing in my world is that we bought a bounce house because we can't take them to a public park or a theme park. And we planned on putting it outside, but the rain on Easter Sunday, it held off, but it looked like it was going to rain. So we moved all of our furniture and blew a whole bounce house up in our living room, which left about four inches to each wall. And that's how we got around the house is like, you know, against the wall the whole day. And it was hilarious. So that, that's our update in our family. I'll bet it was hilarious, but it's absolutely contrary to what I'm going to talk about today. <laughs> And, and I thought it's it preparing might, your home for sale. I know. I kind of thought we might be like breaking every rule with doing that. Um, yeah. yeah. So as what, long as it was temporary, it was just for the day. That's fine. Oh, oh, it is not still up. I think daddy would have gone through and popped it. Um, yeah. But, you know, we'll set it up in the yard later this week, you know, weather dependent. And it's it'll be good to have because we need to get wiggles out. I'm sorry. We need to get rid of what? We need to get our wiggles out. Yes. Yes. I mean, I know everybody's got a lot, a lot of energy and uh, we're kind of missing kids around here being, being at home. We're uh, waving to the kids when we're out on our walks and our bikes, but that's, that's about it. Well, so. as soon as this is all over, come over and you can get my kids wiggles we'll take for them. me. We've had them for quite a while. We'll take them. We'll cool. take them to uh, Disney World and we'll have a good time. I love it. That's a plan. So we were going to talk today about getting ready to get out. The idea that now is a good time to do some stuff around the house. Um, tell me what you're thinking, Pat. Well, there's a lot to do to get ready to sell your house. And people who take that time and go through these steps, they will be rewarded with a higher sales price. People are willing to spend more money on a house that is in good order and in good repair. And those first impressions mean everything. So I'd like to talk a little bit about what to do to get your house ready for sale. Now, even if you're not looking to get your house sold this year, these are all good things for all of us to keep in mind so that we can be ready. And if you've got some time on your hands right now, while we're all stuck at home, a good time to take a look and do it some of these things the first one is declutter declutter and organize what you have so uh i and i think josh you've got a couple of slides you can show I, us i do yeah the very first one scares me uh eliminate 30 percent of the items in every closet tell me about that well you know to start with of what you have for clothing how much do, do we really wear and how much is it, it's just stuff in the back of the closet that someday I'm gonna fit into this again, or even better, someday this is gonna come back into style again. Do I really need those jackets with shoulder pads in them, or is it time to let some of these things go? So what we don't wanna advertise in the sale of the house, we don't wanna advertise lack of space. We want your closets to look roomy so that people are comfortable and feel like there'll be plenty of room for all of their things. So after we do this, now with, there's lots of places we can send them, send them to the Goodwill, the Salvation Army. There's lots of you know places that'll take these things or to the trash. The next thing you wanna do is reorganize those closets you know, lay your things out, put a little Marie Kondo in, into your life by organizing your things. And it could be whatever works best for you, whether it's all of your pants together, your blazers together, or it's by color, whatever works for you. Now, and this includes the floor. 
We don't want the floor to be the place where everything else goes. If we need to put shoes on the floor, make sure they're organized and right next to one another. And I know this will take time, but heck, we're all at home. You know, take one closet a day or one closet a week or make it a weekend project to do some of these things. Um, the, the, the next thing is all of the cabinetry that's going to stay in the house. When people tour your home, they're not going to look at inside your dresser drawers. That would be intrusive, but they are going to look inside all, all of the kitchen cabinets. So take some time to open those drawers, take, you know, make sure all things are logically placed throughout. If you have 42 McDonald's cups that you can't close the door because you have so many random glasses, now's a good time to take those out, either store them somewhere else or give them to somebody else who might be, might be able to use them. So everything excess, and again, just like in your cabinets that you don't want, um, I mean, in your closets, you don't want lack of space to be an issue in your kitchen cabinetry as well. So there might be some uh, uh, old appliances or things that you're just not using anymore. So go go ahead and, and get rid of them and put them in a, you know, organize them in a, them in a way that'll make some sense. You mean that nine-year-old popcorn popper that I'm still holding on to is probably like a not a good hold? Let it go. You, you guys are Disney fans. You know the music. Let it go. Okay. Okay. There's a lot of things that we hold on to that we could probably let go of. Now, once we get through all of the closets in the cabinetry, and this is not just your kitchen cabinets. This is your bathroom cabinets. I bet if you get in the back of a bathroom cabinet, you'll go, oh, I had alcohol. I didn't need to go out and buy alcohol in the store. We have things that we probably don't even know that we have. But again, don't want to advertise lack of space. Try to take half the things out from under that bathroom cabinet and get rid of them. Then we want to go to our excessive decorations. First of all, I don't know about your household, but in my household, my husband goes out and gets the mail and it goes on the kitchen cabinet, a kitchen countertop. That's fine in a normal day. But when we're showing, you know, getting ready to show a house, we want all of those things to be away. Um, I usually recommend on the kitchen cabinetry, you just want to have a couple of things. Your coffee, your coffee pot, maybe your canisters, but that's, that comes a little bit later as you're getting ready for pictures, but start to eliminate all of those things, the school projects, the, you know, random stuff that just finds its home on your, on your cabinetry. And in the bathrooms, the same things. You don't want all of your cosmetics sitting on the cabinetry. You don't want a, just a lot of knickknacks and things. Less is more. So in your decluttering, think about the things that you really like and really mean something to you. So, and you know, depending on how diligent you are, this could take a week or it could take three months. But, you know, as I said, now's a good time to, to take a look at that decluttering process. So Pat, I'm wondering in the decluttering process, do you take things like um, turtles that are eating lizards and remove them? Because I think that's what I see in the background in your shot. Yeah, okay. Well, this has a, this has a story and it's a very important story. Okay. The, the tortoise is the University of Maryland Terrapin and my husband, in his former career in the insurance industry, worked with lots of uh, people who were, you know, uh, Gator fans. And, oh and he had this on this conference table. So he wanted to show people how the Terrapins would take care of their Gators and your Seminoles. When I had it commissioned for him, I never had an idea that it was actually going to come home and be in my house. So, yeah, this is a good example of something that would probably go. Uh, well, especially in Florida. When you're staging in Florida, you don't have things eating the gators. Um, you have true. the gators eating the competition. 
trip yeah trip so this is just kind of and this is a good example that it's something a personal item that should go <laughs> okay i just you know the whole time i'm sitting here going uh pat there's something over that? your shoulder i need to understand and i couldn't wait to ask so now we know <laughs> i'll move him for the next video oh look. no i think you should leave him i actually very much enjoy him well um, i don't want to you know i don't want to offend any potential gator or seminole fans in the future oh I, I think we just need to have a friendly friendly rivalry i grew up in a family where half the family was michigan state wolverines and the other half was ohio state buckeyes and that is you know, that's the Hatfields and the McCoys right there. And uh, it turned into a playful rivalry where in my entire childhood, they kept having to raise the bar of the swag that I would get. By the time I was done, I was getting custom embroidered everything. And it was great. So, uh, you know, rivalry can be healthy. True, true. But this is this is the way he showed all of his uh, co-workers that, uh, you know, who was who was boss. I love it. Okay, so I know that was a diversion and a distraction, yeah. but I think you were getting on to something about repairs. <laughs> right. So moving on to the repairs that you should. This can be something that you need to sit down and talk with us about carefully before we get into certain repairs, because our philosophy is we want to make repairs that are necessary that are going to put your home in the best light. However, we don't want, our, our rule of thumb is, we don't want to spend more than $1 to get back to in terms, in terms of repairs. So we'll get into that in a, in a minute, but I want you to walk into your home with kind of a new set of eyes because we all have blind spots to things that we walk by every day and we don't even notice them anymore. I know I have a a hole in the corner bead of the drywall as we walk into our house from the garage, from something that fell on it two years ago. And it's like, yeah, I'll get to it. Those are the kind of things that we want to see you make repairs. Uh, leaky faucets, mm. sliding door rollers are one of my pet peeves when it's hard to open your slider to go outside. It's a $90 fix to get new uh, door rollers put on the, the bottom of your door. Um, all, any, all of those small kind of things, um, corroded uh, liners in your sink where you, the stopper goes to hold water in your bathroom sink, when they're like completely corroded, all of these little things give the buyer some uh, assurance of how you have cared for your property. And it gives them a sense of comfort that they're buying a quality property that has been well maintained. Here's a, 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 a repair everybody needs to make, and we need to be doing this every month. Change those furnace filters. Mm. One of the first things an inspector is going to look at, at in the course of the in inspection is they're going to pull out that furnace filter. That tells the buyer how often you're taking care of re, re, or re, replacing them. So just these little things. Another one that I think has a big payoff, if you have gold uh, handles and you know brass uh, hinges in your interior doorways, I do, uh, take a weekend to replace those. Go to Home Depot and get either a chrome or a brushed brass. Gold may make a comeback someday, but it is not what buyers are looking for now. It's an easy update that will get add some sparkle to your to your home. Now, often if you're getting into larger repairs about should I change my carpet? Hmm. Should I replace cabinetry or door fronts? Sit down and talk with us first. Don't start making major investments unless it's actually going to pay off in the sales price. This is something that agents do all the time and can help you evaluate those larger repairs and which ones, which ones make sense and which ones may not. One more thing, say, say you have uh, different uh, high hat lights or lighting throughout your home. Make sure all of the bulbs are the same bulb. If you have half LED, and half the uh, conventional light bulbs, change them. Make the lighting all the same throughout the house. It will make a difference in your showings. 
So there's a lot of small little things that you can do that will make a big difference when your house is on the market. So I feel like that list, I didn't even hear $500 other than sweat equity on the homeowner's side. I don't think you were talking even $500 in investment. I mean, there was- I think all of us, if we just walked around our house, we would see things We go, oh yeah, I really didn't notice that. Yeah. A crack in the stucco that could be easily filled with a little bit of caulk and uh, rub it down and put a little bit of paint over it. It's good as new. These are maintenance items that we should all keep up with, but do we even notice them? Yeah, well, you're living your life and you know you got the blinders on, you're a little too close to it. I know, I mean, we're, we're going through it right now. You gave us the punch list and we're looking at things going, oh my, you're right, we should have we should have updated that and and so we're updating but right. things that we could all things that we could all be doing yeah. reading the flower beds you know you don't need to redo everything but put mulch along the walk to the front door will will brighten and freshen and you know make everything more appealing and this is the order i suggest is first doing the decluttering then doing the repairs. And next we're gonna talk about cleaning and getting into cleaning your property. Gotcha, so, oh, you got a nice list going here. Yeah, so, you know, it can't be too clean. I mean, and these are things, that curb appeal, when you, when somebody drives up to your front door, they are going to notice. So we want it to be sparkling, sparkling clean. Like Mr. Clean came through and did and everything. We want to scrub down that grout. Now, these things can either be done by yourself or professionally. We have a list of vendors that we can recommend that will come in and clean your grout throughout the house or just problem areas. Take a look at those door tracks your, and your window tracks. It's so easy for them to get, to get uh, dirty, the windows themselves. Big deal. Everybody, ah, you know, windows get dirty. You want your house to sparkle when it goes on the market. So definitely recommending, even for a 4,000 square foot house, you can get your windows cleaned for $350. So it's not like it's expensive and it goes a long way. Why, after you get the windows clean, you want to make sure that you have dusted the uh, plantation shutters or the blinds to make sure that they're clean. You want to have wiped down, and you can do that in the declutter phase of wiping down the inside of your cabinetry to make sure that it's you know all clean. Go around those baseboards, dust them. Um, uh, and, and a big one, I think, is pressure cleaning your sidewalks and driveway. That does make a huge difference. Roof cleaning is going to depend, and we'd certainly like to weigh in on that or whether it needs to be, be done or not. Typically, if you have a tile roof and you don't haven't routinely done it, we're going to suggest you do it. That's not a pressure washing, and we can talk about that, about how, how to clean those, those you know, things that you don't see every day. We, and let's talk for a second about the garage. I am less concerned about the garage than I am about other spaces. Most people have to use the garage as a place to box up and keep things while they're moving. And most buyers will understand that. But the fewer things you can have in there and the more organized your garage is, the better. Makes sense, makes sense. Overwhelming, I know, it yeah. sounds overwhelming. But on the other hand, your house typically for most of us, it's your most valuable asset. You want to be able to maximize every dollar out of it, whether you're moving upsizing or whether you're downsizing or whether you're just simply moving away. Yeah, well, that makes sense. And and the idea that all of this effort turns into return on your time and investment because you're going to get a higher sale value, you're literally paying yourself to do this work. Right. Yeah. Right. Cool. And I know you have uh, another point about staging. What's uh, What do you do in the staging process? Okay. Staging is going to be a whole other conversation for another another time. We'll get together and talk about that in detail later. However, I will, would say there are basically three kinds of staging. 
I am actually an ASP, which is an accredited staging professional. Um, okay. So I, where I just like to stop is I like to go, work with you in your home and make suggestions about these are the things we want to take away. These are a few things we may want to add into the decor. And this is some furniture rearrangement that we might want to do. Okay. So I feel very comfortable in working with homeowners to do that. Um, and staging includes, includes all kinds of things like, is the paint color appropriate for this space? I happen to love red. I have one red accent wall in my living room. Would I sell my house like this? No. I would paint it back to the neutral shade that the rest of the, uh, the walls in the room, room are. So, there, so that's a step one staging is working with me. Step two is you can hire a professional stager to come in and just give you an evaluation. Though that cost is going to be between $200 and $350 for a two-hour session. Um, and we can talk, we'll talk more about that later. Uh, and, you know, for, for another time, we'll go through a whole 30 minutes on, how, on staging. And the third is to have a professional staging company come in with furniture and uh, you know completely staging one to one room to all of the rooms in their house with their own furniture um, and there are times when this makes very good sense however it's very expensive uh, the first uh, consultation can be up to eight hundred dollars the initial putting the furniture in the house can be two to three thousand dollars and then there is a monthly cost of renting the furniture which depends it can go anywhere from uh, three hundred dollars a room to six hundred dollars a room to for the rental of the furniture there are places for all three types of staging and that you know uh i think we could uh we'll add pictures in and show you uh examples of staged versus unstaged so that it help you to uh, decide what you want to do. But at this point, being at home, take, you know, start working on some of these things. And Josh, I do have to tell you something else. This may be the last live I'm able to do with you without a hat on. Um, since I can't get out of the house, I'm trying to keep my head up as much as I can so that nobody can really see the true color of my hair. Well, that is a problem that a lot of people have right now. I will tell you, my friend who had a wickedly cool pompadour only about three weeks ago now looks very much like me because it was just flopping over and he was looking more like an 80s metal band. And so he has shaved it all down to about 16 millimeters the way I've been doing it, which is, I think, it is just the new quarantine chic. Yeah, but all this time I thought I was kidding. I was fooling people. You know, I thought they didn't know that I really had right here. Well, and it's, I can tell you, I personally never thought about any about your hair color other than you look like you. You know, so it's like I don't know. It is what it is. Right. I know. I know. It is exactly what it is. Um, well. Uh, Amazon still delivers. I will say that. So if you've got, if you want to get color in a box, I'm sure there the prices might be going up, but uh, I'm sure you can get it. You know, to that point, I had a client in uh, San Francisco who really wanted to get a better webcam, and so I was like, well, you know, I, I can guide you through the process. And we started looking at stuff, and the camera I thought I was going to recommend was originally forty-seven dollars. It is now two hundred ninety dollars and on back order because everybody's on Zoom, you know, supply and demand, here we go. And right. so uh, I have a feeling hair color is gonna go up in price. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you know, a big shout out to Sammy at Scissors who takes very good care of me and my hair color. There you go. And I'm gonna try to hang in there and wait for her because I'm afraid of doing, you know, there's some things that you leave to the professionals, like- Like real estate? You know? <laughs> like selling your home, like hair color, you know, all important things to leave to somebody who ha who knows what they're doing. 
That makes a lot of sense. And that's a really cool place to leave this is, um, you know, I, everybody who follows me knows that I'm always talking about some, you are probably an expert in something and the world should let you be the expert in that. And you can help people from there and stay in your lane, gosh darn it, because you've been working that lane so hard already. You might as well. Right. And let and let other people do that special thing that they know how to do for you so that you don't go and muck it up because, uh, you know, you could and that would stink. So with that, um, I'm Josh Pies. This is Pat Taylor. Thanks, Josh. It's been a pleasure being with you today. And always a pleasure being with you. Uh, everybody knows we go live every now and then, at least once a week with Triple T Realty and then with a lot of other people. And if you think, gee, I want to go live with Josh, you probably know how to find me. But if you don't, just email me at the easiest email I have. Are you ready? Josh at joshpies.com. Until then, uh, don't go licking. Hey, your... wait a minute. Let me give mine as well. Yes, please. Is Pat at three T's. It's T T T Realty.com. Awesome. And with that, wave to your neighbors, don't hug them, and stop licking doorknobs. We'll see you at B6.